Hey guys, this is episode 17 of Sam Square Bows. How are you? Good. Yourself? Good, mate. Our guest today is Scoop It Up founder and Pilates instructor Sarah Cooper. Thanks for doing this. How you been? Thanks for having me. I'm good. Thank you. And nutrition student. And nutrition, and nutrition student. student. Yeah. Come on, mate. How's uh, COVID been? <laughs> yeah, it hasn't really changed that much besides kind of socially, I think. Yeah. Socially, I think. Um, in terms of work and uni, it just kind of all shifted online. So I'm still busy. What about the Pilates studio? Yeah, so we shut for a few months and then we just switched online. So it was either like Zoom, we did live classes or pre-recorded. Is that better? No. Yeah, that's shit. <laughs> it's because like, it's like doing it and you're out of breath. Yeah. And then you're trying to talk the whole time. Yeah, I've done one on you. I did one on YouTube like a month ago, a few months ago, and they look tired themselves. And I was, yeah. yeah. And it's the sound like people can't hear you, and then someone leaves their mic on, and they're like kids screaming. In the oh, background. it's a full Zoom class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Pilates then. First yeah. up, because it's a foreign concept to most males, I'd say. Including sure. me, even though I've tried it. Have either yeah. of you? Oh, you've done I've it? I've tried it a couple of times and I was surprised. Like, it's hard. Yeah. But it's more of like a therapy for me, like a correcting kind of thing. Yeah. It's not a real workout. I think, like, my. Me. Mm, mm, for me. Debatable. For me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my brother said he had to do it for, uh, for rugby at school. Um, and it's funny, like, one of our studios, some guys come, mm. but it's very much targeted to females. So, like, not often. But when they do come, they leave, like, in agony. It's quite funny. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, so what is but it? It's, well, it's basically like a lot of people, I think, use it for rehab. So did mm. you do it for an injury? No, no. I just did it because I was like, there's a craze going on. And I was like, why not? Yeah. Well, I think it's different, especially for guys in terms of like instead of compound movement, it's like all those really small isolating muscles. And because they're so small, they're usually mm. pretty weak because you never use them. That's why you wake up sore because you never yeah. use them. Yeah. Right. So it's like all those stabilizers. So especially for people as they get older, like... So good for uh, like physios will often prescribe it for like your posture, mm. and like people get they get really bad neck pain. So um, I was talking to James Raftos we had on last week, and he he was saying that it started off as therapy for elderly, the elderly. Yeah. Roman Pilates or something started it for, as yeah. a therapy, yeah. but now it's grown into like a full blown movement. Yeah, so I think some people kind of see it as just kind of rehab, but they think it's like yoga, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you also have to kind of try and do it. To mm. kind of reap the benefits because it's so hard to explain, but it's like that kind of like really, you know, you get that just like burn. It's like high rep. It is, and the pulsing not. is. It's the pulsing. Have you tried it? <laughs> I've never tried it before. I think I need <laughs> it. <for> <laughs> when yeah. like COVID hit and like we stopped, I started doing a few sessions in the park, and like Ben Gordon came. Mm. <laughs> and I was like trying to like get guys because it's so funny when guys come because they never do it. No, they love it though. Don't know Gord's loves it. My brother loves it. My dad loves it. Yeah, where do they go? Ah, uh, they go to fluid form. So they go, do they do reformer? Yeah. Okay. Everything, What's everyone's that? always talking about the reformer. What's that? Oh, ooh. Ooh, see, I teach What's them so that. special about no, it? No, I reckon, I don't know, it's such a craze. Like, the reformer's like the bed that you do it on. Oh. But yeah. it kind of, I think it's easier because it kind of supports you so you can slack off. Whereas if yeah. you're on the floor and you slack off, you fall over. It's a bit of a, like, a dispute going on. A bit of a dispute. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's good to do both, mix it up. What are the clear benefits of Pilates? Mm. Like, I know you might have just Proven. asked this, but what are the... What do you I see? Think, well, what I think it's like ones? mostly kind of that strengthening and like lengthening at the same time. So it's not like necessarily shortening the muscle, but you're getting like all the like stabilizers. Mm. So instead of those like huge compound movements, you're getting like the strength of all the stabilizers that can really hold up. So like the most common injuries are probably what like your neck and like your lower back. Mm. Heaps of people do Pilates like knee injuries. Because it stabilizes like your hip, your glutes, everything that's like stabilizing, like your and ankle. For balance, yeah. yeah, so good for your balance as well. So, would you do it with compound movements? You say, like, so you do a gym session, yeah, and then, well, I, or you reckon it's good it's by itself? Like, it's it's so up to the person. I reckon like some people will just stick to it and love it, like that's all they do. Yeah. Like we have people that are members of the studio, and that's just like their favorite thing to do. Um, and then there's other people that just like they might do F forty five or like circuit training a bit and then do pilates or like whatever so i think it depends on the person do you think it's fine to just do straight up pilates or would you encourage doing weights I, oh not necessarily weight oh i mean it depends what gets your heart rate up but i think you still need to get that like cardiovascular fit, like in terms mm. of your heart health especially as you get older it's probably important to get that like so more cardio kind of out of breath yeah because you don't come out sweating do you You'd come out just you come out th- sweaty but not necessarily your heart rate's going to be that elevated I mean, it depends what you – it so depends on the class. Like, sometimes I've left, like, a mess and sometimes you leave and you're kind of like, oh, I've still got quite a bit of energy in me, yeah. you know. So let's talk about Scoop It Up. So what is it? What is it? Yeah, for the okay. people. 
Um, how did it start? Well, okay, so my name, did we introduce my name? My name is Sarah Cooper. Like my friends name? used to call me, yeah. <laughs> I did, I did. Come my on. friends used to call me. Like, I'm not that bad of a host. <laughs> <laughs> um, the name just came because like people used to call me Scoops. Yeah. And then it came from that and then it was like Scoop It Up kind of like food related. So I started just with recipes. Mm. Um, so started like mainly just cooking, started a website and then posted the recipes there and kind of linked it to my Instagram. And then I free? S- yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I started like making and selling stuff for a couple of years, mainly like bliss balls, mm. did like some event catering and then it just got super expensive. Like didn't get a lot of profit out of it because all the ingredients are so expensive, like nuts, yeah. coconut oil, or like all that. Activated stuff. charcoal. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, <laughs> didn't incorporate that but along the same lines. Um, so I kind of did that for a bit and then, yeah, kind of tried to. It was kind of more beneficial. Also, like people have such a short attention span, they didn't mm. visit. They started to visit the blog less and less. Like if I post a recipe on Instagram, people just like, sweet, I'll screenshot it. I'm not even going to look at it unless I'm actually going to make it. That's true. Blogs have kind of died off Whereas a bit. Whereas I, I like love reading blogs, but really? I think like, yeah, at first like it was like good traffic and now people, it's so much easier to just save it on Instagram. Yeah. And then it's just, it's way easier for me in terms of profit to like make money off doing like recipe content yeah. than like selling food. So it started as a food kind of page. Yeah. What does it come into? And now it kind of, it still is, but it's more like recipe content. So like I'll just do recipes for brands and then they can pay me to do that. And then it's just more yeah. worth my time. Because like at first I was kind of like out of school, like I didn't have that much to do. So I was like, oh, I'll just cook for fun. And I'm like, I don't know. How do we much. start it? It's like, how do I kind of like make it worth my while? And it's kind of such a fine line because I think like I didn't intend for it to be that much of a business, like more fun. But now I'm like, I feel like you have to kind of look at it in a smart way. That's the way good businesses start when it's just like a fun yeah. hobby. Yeah. I think there's a passion there. Have you always been a good eater or is this something that you've worked towards? Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like one of those people that's like, I used to like binge drink and be like eat McDonald's every day and then suddenly <laughs> like yeah. something switched in my head. That um, sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I was like always like, my mum was always like a big runner. And, like, we were just, like, sporty as kids. Like, we were, like, never super strict, but, like, I think she was always into, like, cooking. And, like, I don't think I got properly into, like, healthy food until I started Pilates when I was, like, 15 or 16. And then through that, I think they used to post about kind of, like, healthy recipes and, like, eating well. And then I think from there I was kind of exposed to it a bit more. It makes such a big difference when you start eating well. Especially after you finish a workout, you want to get a good meal in. Like, you don't want to eat a shit meal after a workout. I think they go hand in hand. It's just funny. I was like talking to someone last night about um, just like mood and food and like how it makes you feel. And it was just like even she said having that self-awareness of like eating something and then actually like realising how it makes you feel because I think everyone's That's so true. busy. You just like shove your food down, get on to the next thing. That's me. You like stop yeah. and like <laughs> sit Bite, down, like chew. eat it really slowly, which like I don't do half the time either. But then you actually kind of think, oh, that, that did actually – give me so much energy or it made me feel so much worse are you a vegan no okay it was funny because i saw you i saw you um put that on the list of questions and i was like does he think i'm vegan i did i did are either of you vegan no were you no i've never been my mom's south african so Uh, and my brother cooks like a mad steak like every single night so i don't think i could live in my household being vegan so the food that you make and scoop it up yeah it's kind of like um is it usually fruit and Acai and no, that's I'm a, bit, a lot of sugar. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rookie here. Could no, you please explain like, the kind of? It's things funny you because before I move on, in terms of veganism, I actually I don't know if you listen to this podcast. Did you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast with Miley Cyrus? Yes, I did. That was how, very good. How nice is her voice? Yeah, it's quite <laughs> soothing. <laughs> she um, because she was vegan and then she started eating fish because she wasn't getting enough omega three for her brain. And she said she was feeling like so shit and her mood. And as soon as she started incorporating fish, she felt better. I think like veganism, if we want to talk about that, I personally, I think for the short term, people think, wow, this is amazing because it eliminates a lot of foods. Yes and no, but you can do it like Oreo is a vegan. Like Mm. you can, you can do veganism really unhealthily. Yeah, but they (laughs) feel good in the short term, right? A month, they're like, wow. And then as time goes on, they don't check their blood, they don't do anything, and then they just start to fall apart and they're like, what's going on? I think you can do it if you're well-informed. Like, I have a mm. lecturer at uni and she is vegan and she was like, if... 
but she's pedantic about it, you know, that she's like, if I'm eating like plant-based iron, I'm not going to absorb it. So I have to have vitamin C with every meal. It's like, no one knows that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, I don't, is that a correct diet if you have to supplement so much? You don't have to supplement if you're doing it properly. B12? Yeah. So if you're getting enough B12. From what? Nutritional <laughs> yeast. Like weird things. Like it's only if you research it. Yeah. So oh. most, the majority of people would not do that. No. Yeah. What about the carnivore diet? Slipping over. <laughs> have you looked into it's that? Like, no, I think it's like, it's just really high in saturated fat. So you want less saturated fat because saturated fat you're getting in like animal stuff, like meat. Mm. But I if you're not having it, like. If you're working out like all the time and you're an athlete, mm. could, isn't saturated fat good for that? Well, not for well, your heart health. <laughs> <laughs> I had three steaks before I got here. Did nothing else. <laughs> well, I have this argument with my brother every Just day like because he's been getting like he's been getting these steaks from field to fork. You know the butcher. And oh that. yeah. He is like he's bought a new barbecue just to like perfect his steaks. Is that the one on Bondi Road across the road from the beach? On no, Wall that's Street, Marcella like Rio. where okay. where like Harris Farm is. Oh uh, yeah. And there's one in Vaucluse as well. <laughs> they're not cheap, eh? No, they're not. And Jesus. he cooks like a fat one every <laughs> night. And I'm like, I think you just need to like give balance it a rest. Balance it, eh? like, Is that yeah. what everything comes back to, That's, just balance? Yeah. I was going to say like it's just everything in moderation. Like you can have – like even if you're eating like bowls of cauliflower every day, like you can have too much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to scoop it up. So what is yeah, it sorry, now? Yeah, sorry, what was your question? <laughs> you were like, what, what yeah, sorry. I post? Yeah, so like just what kind like, of yeah. – I don't know, just stuff that I like. Yeah. Do you post workouts? Yeah, but – I feel like, like sometimes I do, but because I teach, it's usually through work and then mm. that's on a different platform. Yeah, it, yeah. And then like during COVID, like I tried to do a few, but it's so awkward, like filming it from your phone. Like I don't really have a good space at home to do it. And like, you can't really hear. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, it's just, like, <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> so what sort of feedback do you get from your followers from this page? Um, I don't know. It's a lot of, because it's still like mostly recipe based. Um, it's usually just people like recreating recipes, I guess. Um, as I kind, I'm trying to like broaden it out, but I'm such a like, <laughs> I was not made for social media. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm naturally quite a shy like person, so for me, like I just find it a little bit strange. Right. But I also think people can connect to a page easily when there's more of a face there or mm. kind of something to say. Um. But at the same time, like, you don't want to just be telling people what to do. Like, I get some yeah. girls messaging me, like, crazy things. I'm like, I'm not, like, yeah, I can't you're a student. This. You're not I'm getting like, advice. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, you need to go, like, ask someone else. <laughs> that. Like, I, people will just be like, what do I do about this and this and this? And I can give them what I think, but it's so hard to be like, take with caution or, like, you know, this is my opinion, but it's not yeah. necessarily what you need to do. So, how far are you into this um, nutrition degree? So, I'm. Just started my second year because it's my second uh, degree. Second degree. So I did PR and journalism first at UTS. I'm doing it was that. a waste. Oh. Yeah, it is a waste. No, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't well, know if it's I a waste. Know. I just I went into it being like I really like writing. I want to do journalism. And they're like journalism's dying out. And then you got to be a robot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have no no bad things in the past that's yeah. happened yeah. to you. <laughs> um, started doing PR, which was. Just so boring. I don't know. What I don't do in PR. I, yeah, it's like writing press releases, doing things oh. like crisis management or like connecting brands with um, other. Like, I get a lot of PR people messaging me, being like, "Can you do a something with this company or whatever?" So it's like kind of the mediate in between. But I think also like I just don't want a desk job. Yeah, I think that's like, what I don't want to sit at a computer all day either. <laughs> do you the feel posture, like eh? like social media? <laughs> Everyone's Instagram. Like, it's kind of cut out all that. You got to. <laughs> You gotta suck up to someone for ten years and like like a PR agent. Yeah, true. And you gotta suck a up. You can kind of do it yourself if you. Obviously, it's a lot harder, but you can use Instagram and you yeah, can you use can that reach. Yeah, you can kind of use it as your like resume. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I guess true. so. I think it so depends on the industry and what you're doing, because, I like I don't know how it works for like different career paths, but I mean it definitely helps. I think. Especially lawyers, doctors, psychologists. You yeah, need a, like if yeah. you're a doctor and you start an Instagram page, I don't know how far that's going to get <laughs> I've seen you. it. Plus it's not good. Surgeon, I <laughs> like you can share interesting stuff, but then I don't know. Apparently in Miami you can do that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the celebrity dentist. <laughs> um, so where are you going to take this pa- this scoop? What do you call it? What would you call I don't know. it? Like, I, don't know. I guess it's a business. Yeah, business. I've got like a website. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I'll see how I go with my degree. Like. 
ultimately at the start I was like I think I do want to like be a nutritionist and practice kind of like have my own business would be good that's what my mum does she's a physio so she works for herself um which I think would be cool and then it's quite flexible I could Mm. sort of teach if I wanted to um but then you kind of speak to people that have done nutrition degrees and they say kind of like one in seven actually leave and do actually practice because you get a lot of clients I think that come and they're not truthful (laughs) and like whatever but I just think there's still such a gap like I every time I go to a GP like I just get Mm. nothing out of it and like I'll get bloods done they're like you're so fine and I'm like I don't feel fine and then I take them to a nutritionist or a naturopath and they're like no they're completely out of whack is it partly because they don't get taught that in university it's I think maybe um, they haven't kind of reformed the ranges. So if you kind of get your bloods taken, there's like a huge range. So they might say, okay, the number can be between like 0.5 to like 80 or something. Mm. And you can sit anywhere between that. And if you're on the low end or the high end, they're just like, oh, it's within range, so it doesn't matter. seems like GPs are losing their like reputation a bit. Yeah, I think they there's were, kind of a shift toward like integrated GPs, which kind of – what does merge that mean? the two together so they it's probably a bit more holistic so they kind of uh, take yeah. elements of i think nutrition and they look at your lifestyle a bit more like holistic um, yeah yeah that, i reckon that's the new thing it it's should be so like a much more clinic. expensive though and like yeah. i don't think i like you can get bulk build gp but i don't you can't do that uh, like integrated gps are like 400 bucks for do, like one. do you think they stick to like just normal gps stick to traditional medicine like all the time i don't yeah. know i think a lot of them that I – I don't know about, like, ones that you see. A lot of, like, the ones I see, because they're older, like, probably like my mum's generation. I feel like it's a generational thing. Yeah. So what they learnt, like, 30 years ago, they're kind of just not renewing, like, the information. Like, there's so much more current research, but I just – But don't they have a responsibility to look up that? Yeah, probably they do. do. Like, grandpa is a doctor. He was a doctor. He's, like, 84. Yeah. Please, sorry to the family, but <laughs> I'm going to say this. He um, – <laughs> He doesn't drink water. He doesn't drink water. He's that's a, a new one. And, and he says, he says, uh, no, water's for horses. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what that je- we're dealing with, though. So like, what liquid does he yeah. drink? He drinks a cup of tea, has a coffee. It's water. But like, uh, well, if it's he doesn't drink like straight uh, water, like no glasses of water ever. Water's like, the best. And that dehydration, is right, is, that is so, so important, strange. right? That is so strange. He doesn't drink much, but he drinks a glass of wine a day. Oh, people are funny. I wonder what we're going to be like when we're old, like that shit. <laughs> Does he pre- that's the thing about GPs too. They prescribe antibiotics like mm. left, right and centre. So you kill your immune system, right? Yeah, it just kills all your like good bacteria in your gut, just wipes it out. Do you study much of the gut? The yeah. microbiome? Yeah, I mean yesterday, well at the moment, I'm doing like my first kind of subject in disease. Mm. So it's really interesting because they were saying the reason people like antibiotics is because it doesn't destroy any of your cells. Like, it just destroys the, like, pathogen. Yeah. Or, like, it's a microorganism, but because you already have those in your gut, it can't distinguish between what's bad and what's good. Wow. So it just wipes everything out. It's like another brain, they say. They always say that. Yeah. It's like a second brain. Yeah, I don't know how. because it's all connected. Well, yeah. I mean, it all connects through, like... I mean, you think, like, everything you eat goes straight into your gut, so your gut has to deal mm. with everything that you absorb. And then all through your central nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system and all. My, my guy for a couple brain. of years would have had to deal with uh, six packets of red rocket <laughs> chips every day. I don't know how. Everyone's how I came to dealt with came shit. <laughs> it's crazy. Couldn't imagine how bad that'd be for you. Does a nutrition degree, you're in two years in, do you think it, so it's three years? Yeah, it's three. Do you think it will, t- is, is adequate? Mm. No. <laughs> I mean, like, I, it's, it's funny though because lots of the foundational subjects are super... Like, they just cover – so, like, we had to do anatomy for one subject, which was – and I was, like, just so overwhelmed. I showed mm. it to my mum because I was like, maybe you can help me. She was like, I did this in a year and you're doing this in, like, 12 weeks. Wow. But I think because it's – I like, at the end of the day, I'm not going to really need to know it that well. Like, I think as I get deeper into the degree, I'll probably, like, look at things more in-depthly, whereas now it's still – it's kind of in between those, like, first-year foundational kind of subjects. But I think it also depends on, like – even it's like your, when I did my Pilates stuff, like you can learn something, but it's only once you start applying it that you mm. kind of, you know what you I mean? Like do if you it. don't revise it and then like put it into practice, like you're just not going to remember it. Um, what do you, what are like the, some of the biggest, I don't know, food drinks that cause inflammation that you've cut out recently? Like I've never that. kind of stopped and like yeah. cut something out. Really? Okay. And I think 
It depends on your own. It depends on your own body. So I think it's so interesting when you start like getting, even though it's so expensive, so it's, it's like annoying. Like you start doing tests and like you look at like how your body works. And mm. I was the girl I was talking to last night was saying like she was struggling with really really low moods for ages. And so she got some tests done and she noticed that she her blood sugar was high. And she was like, that's really weird because I eat really, really well. Um, and she just wasn't responding well to carbohydrate. So not that she was eating like crap food, but like stuff like sweet potato would just like mm. spike her insulin. Ooh, wow. So like whereas for like other women, like if they cut out all carbohydrates, their hormones would just yeah. go mad. Have you um, done any tests? Um, like I've done them like over the years, but I think your like body's always changing. So I think like sometimes if I'm like oh like if I'm feeling like tired or something like oh like I kind of know if my like, iron's low, mm. and then I'll do bloods and I'll be like oh you know like eat more red meat or do you mean like changing because of the season or do you think not necessarily just- I think you're just like depending on if you're taking like antibiotics <laughs> or like things that are changing like your gut so if you're like super stressed mm. um like you're go- and then you're gonna be like inflamed to mm. everything like you might respond you know like you could eat one thing and be fine and then you could eat the same thing and just feel like shit that's the toughest thing all over my face that'd be the toughest thing about being a nutritionist finding out what works for that person that yeah because you can yeah you can do so many tests and look like right into every single bacteria that's in your gut and see like where you've got an overgrowth where you're missing like all that stuff would you want to be a, um, a nutritionist that treats patients is that what they do yeah right like a doctor but for food yeah, well, I guess it's like you've got a dietitian and then you've got a nutritionist. So, like, dietitians look at just food and then nutritionists oh. are more holistic. So, you come in and be like, what's your family like? Like, what's your life been like up to now? What do you eat? What do you drink? What do you do for work? How, How many benders do you have a week? Yeah. <laughs> like it, yeah. it looks at, like, every single aspect. So, it's not – because I think it's sort of ignorant to be like, what do you eat? And that's mm. it. Like, it's – if you're eating, like, ignorant. standing up and you're eating the most delicious – like healthy meal, yeah. it's not going to digest properly. Do you, would you look at sleep as well? Oh, yeah, 100%. That's like a big one, hey? Yeah, it's huge. And I think people are like getting way more into it now as well. Mm. Eight um, hours. I've just recently started using glycine. Have you heard about this? Mm-hmm. Is it an amino acid? I think so, yeah. Oh, you don't know, mate. <laughs> Come on. I'll get it out. <laughs> give me a sec. <laughs> it's right here. Glycine—it's probably something we have in our bodies already. Why yeah, did you start? Know. Why did you start taking it? Oh, this this is person I follow on Twitter. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, that's that's the problem yeah, about social media. Say his name. <laughs> you can't just copy what Sorry, people are doing. Yeah, but I'll just give it a crack. What's, yeah. crack, what's the worst that's going to happen? Mm. Have you tried it's magnesium? It's been good. I've got magnesium as well. I do I do both? It should do the same thing. Because it's supporting our time. nervous system. I feel like I get way deeper sleep. I, don't I started know. taking CBD and melatonin to sleep, and it not melatonin's again. good. You get CBD. It's the mix. I found it when I was in New York, and the guy just sends it to me now. Allegedly, he's so dodgy, you can't say that. <laughs> You're on air. Can you hook us up. <laughs> yeah, he's got an Instagram. Like it's very strange, but like it definitely works. So you just get in the mail. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Can we? I'm onto that. that. You yeah. Try it. I might start I'll a network bring, with the guy. I'll bring you down. some when I get some. No, honestly, because it works so well. Yeah, I just I recommend it heavy. Heavily is it creatine? It's a, it is an amino acid. Yeah, right. So do you take any supplements? Yeah, I mean, I think you shouldn't be on, like, one supplement for ages. Mm. Like, if you need to, like, if you're working to fix something at the time. Like, I've, like, in the past, like, I've been low in zinc. I've taken zinc or, like, probiotics, iron. Probiotics are weird because you're, like, you're told to take them, but you never really figure out what's good about them. For me. Well, that, it, well, why were you told to take them? I just read, like, or I listened to a podcast, and Rhonda Patrick probably said, take them. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, I'll take them. And then yeah. I didn't really, like, it was probably good for me, but I didn't know why. Yeah, it's like, well, how. yeah, it's just, it's good for, like, it helps support your gut bacteria. It's just encouraging, like, probiotics mm. if you're not getting enough in food or it just, I think supplements are so funny because... Like people on Twitter <laughs> this guy's can tell good. you, to, like this guy. I think like the there's certain supplements would be fine. I think like everyone would benefit from taking magnesium. Mm. Like Why? You probably just can't because like it's just so good for your nervous system. I think it's hard to get a sufficient amount through your diet that's actually going to make you feel a difference. 
I'll be doing it at night time. Mm-hmm. Twice a day or do you think once? Yeah, um, sometimes you can get it with like a B complex, like B vitamins. So you shouldn't take that at night because that's going to give you more energy. Mm. But not in like a cortisol aspect. Like this will calm your nervous system, but then it will give you energy. So if it's like, if it goes yellow when you mix it, mm-hmm. no. then don't take it at night because yeah, it's got cool. B vitamins. Um, so talking about Don, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, is that who you kind of want to your career to be like a bit? I don't actually know what she does that much. I've listened to, I think, like two of her podcasts. She's more of a scientist, though, I think. Yeah. She's extremely Technical. intelligent. Yeah. She's yeah. so well read. Oh, my goodness. Like, and she, and she um, articulates it so well mm. for dumb people like us. <laughs> us. <sorry>. No. <laughs> you know, dumb. <laughs> How old this is she? This guy got a 99 on eight times. called himself dumb. <laughs> I don't think you're dumb. Nutrition. I don't know anything about it. Come on, man. The only thing Get I know about here. nutrition is from her. I think she's probably – I think the good thing is she just continues to read and read and read. Yeah. And that's what I love about when you find podcasts with people like that because they just have so much knowledge and they're constantly reading because like, things are constantly changing as well. What are your thoughts on alcohol use? Like do you look much into that in your degree or is it kind of – Um, We haven't like – Gone deep into it. Mm. I feel like it's common sense, though. Yeah, but do you think? I mean, I don't know. I yeah. mean, like obviously, like we've talked about, like the like the risk factors of it and yeah. how it affects your liver, and like do you think it's more detrimental than people think. Or I'm pretty sure everyone kind of gets it. I mean, I don't know. Like people like binge drink mm. in Australia. Like, <coughs> do, do you know? What, like <laughs> it's just, it's just like I think. I don't know. We're just like in a culture where people think it's so normal, and it's yeah. I just like people don't realize because everyone does it. Yeah. Whereas if everyone was having like one or two drinks, slowly enjoyed it, and then there was someone randomly who was like smashing a bottle of wine at parties and then going out and having like ten drinks, Mm. they'd be like, "What is going on?" In Europe, you don't you don't see that in Europe. They just drink at dinner and then they keep drinking. But like here, it's cruises like yeah it's little just, fat lamb like what yeah it's i'm just bewildered by just it. pick your poison though i like, just like you, you yeah. shouldn't cut it out like no i don't think you, can, you need to cut it out but i think like i think if you're gonna drink like i think most people can minimize how much they're drinking mm, i reckon everyone probably and do. like looking at what you're drinking so like cruises and all that like it's the sugar mm. so like cocktails everything and that's what's going to be the worst hangover i reckon and so then, yeah the it's, sugar it's like not even the alcohol it's like everything's added to it first as well true and then it's the alcohol as well that's just what, a, what about cannabis what are your thoughts on depends on the person <laughs> that's so the like, best answer no but it's like no, no like some people can have like terrible reactions mm. and go like schizophrenic like and for some people it's like super therapeutic and, and it can be like, I think they should legalize it medically, a hundred percent. Yeah, because it could benefit so many people, like especially cancer patients. At least um, legalize like CBD. I was reading about it. Yeah, yeah. at um, least. Yeah, so I think I think it depends. Like I think for some people it can be really good. Other people it makes them super lazy, mm. and it just turns them into a really unproductive person. Um, so. What do you meditate? No, I don't. Ooh. Do you? I feel like you would. But like meditation, what does it mean? Is it just because it means different pe- different things to different people? I think it's pretty. You're simple, a purist, actually. yeah. Did, did you do Vedic meditation? <laughs> no, no. I just I just did it. I've been like trial and erroring erroring it for like the last three years. Mm. So all all it is, you just got to sit down. I think it's good to get like binaural beats mm-hmm. and just put that sound on. The um, what? Binaural, like it's like a it's like a sound of an ocean or oh, something. Oh, okay. No, it's just yeah, and you just sit down and. You just let those thoughts come up. You just watch them. You ride them. See, like, yeah. I cannot sit still. I mm. just, like, I, I just can't do it. And I listened to this really, well, it was just nice for me to hear, but um, I was watching, there was an Instagram live on meditation. They were chatting about it. And they were like, you know, if you, if you are one of those people that cannot sit still and do it, they are like, if you're, like, maybe you would rather, like, a moving meditation. So if your meditation is going for like a swim in the ocean or like putting your phone away and going for a walk. Like I think that's really nice. Like if I make a conscious effort to put my phone away and like be really present in the moment, for me that's like a form of being like meditative. 100%. Um, The author who wrote um, Ego is the Enemy and Stillness is the Key, his name is Ryan Holiday, and he actually wrote a whole book on Stillness is the Key and he can't meditate. 
<laughs> and so he runs. That's what his meditation Running, is. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. I think it's just uh, just being like looking, doesn't matter what you do, and just being like, okay, my body's kind of got a mind and I'm like looking at the body mind. I'm like aware <laughs> of the mood um, and how you can kind of be yeah. like, all right, that's just going to make me nervous if I keep thinking like that. That's just going to make me angry. Yeah. Kind of just. Did you read the book The Untethered Soul? No. I've heard of that. What is so it? So it's like, I've read it once and I'm probably going to have to read it another five times for it to work. The Untethered Soul. What's that mean? It's basically like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like all about the mind, mm. but it talks about being able to step back and like look at yourself thinking. So, like, watching mm. your thoughts, like, being able to kind of, like, step out of your head. I've heard of this. It's so bizarre. I had to sit there with a highlighter and read, like, three pages at a time. I've heard of this. Because it was so in depth. I feel like you would like it because <laughs> yeah, it's kind of along the lines of what you're saying. You look at you – go, um, you go external from your head and you look at your reaction. Yeah, so you're mm. able to observe, like, how you're responding and how you're thinking without being in that thought. Like, you're able to step back and observe. That's Which I think cool. is really hard to do. For meditation, I've said this, I think it's the fourth time I've said this on, on each podcast, <laughs> but I said I used to think that I was my mind for a long time. Like I thought it was just... You were your thoughts. Just yeah. Oh, I feel like that all the time. But it's, you're not, that's mm. the thing, like you, when you kind of meditate a bit or you yeah. do whatever you want, you realise that you're just the awareness of those thoughts. Yeah. And um, if we're going to get real deep here, <laughs> it's just like you kind of get into consciousness and you not you don't get into it, but you kind of... Start to focus on that more, like the moment mm. consciousness that's always kind of present, yeah. Instead of just those stupid, useless thoughts that like kind of just haunt you and annoy you. So. They do haunt yeah. you. Eh? Yeah. So yeah, and that's what it talks about as well. That whole thing of like consciousness and like the different parts of your mind and your brain. Your body kind of knows um, the thoughts that make you tick, mm-hmm. or the ones that make you annoyed, or the ones that yeah. make you kind of just feel so shit about yourself. And it's the reason why it does that is because it's just survival mode. Yeah. Because it's just trying to protect you from, you know, where. And probably habit, right? Pardon? Probably habit. For sure. And conditioning for decades. So you don't meditate or you don't do the traditional meditation. So how I do should. you help your mental health? I, sh- I should meditate. <laughs> like, I'm just a <laughs> naturally, like, anxious, like, jittery person. Mm. Like, sometimes I think I have adult ADHD because I can't <laughs> sit still. But I think, like, it's just my mind's busy. Like, I'm just doing lots of different things all the time. Um, so I think like, I think even if I'm not properly meditating, I think trying to be more present in a moment is Mm -hmm. like really important. And like often for me, that's like putting my phone away and like spending time with someone, not really like thinking about what's coming next or what I'm doing tomorrow, what I did this morning. Um, and I think also like, I guess it's a little bit like meditation, but like definitely like the power of your breath. Mm. And I'm all, whenever I teach, like I always start with rounds of breath. And then I finish with rounds of breath. So, like, it's that exhale that really, like, gets that, like, parasympathetic nervous system to kick in. And I think, like, often for me, like, I find if I actually stop and focus on my breath, I'm not taking a f- proper full deep breath. Mm. Like, I'm taking kind of, like, shallow breaths. Or your mouth breathing or yeah. something. What's yeah. the breathing like in Pilates? Is this yeah, so it's similar. Thing? Well, it's sort of like that kind of deep belly breathing. Right. I don't know if you do that in meditation. No. You so don't? it's like you in. Yeah. So how you kind of cue it is you like inhale through your nose and then like feel your belly expand. So like you're avoiding that shallow breath. So you're like you shouldn't feel it in your chest. And so you're like it's like uh. or, or kind of that like diaphragmatic breath. And then like exhale out through your mouth. So then it, you how do you like do that while you're open. pulsing? <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> you With every it. pulse, you think of like an exhale. Uh, okay. So it's a little bit faster as you're okay. moving. What's the benefit but of the pulsing? The thing. <laughs> 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 it's strengthening your muscles What like, is pulsing? It's like the it's like movements d- that It's like if you're in a lunge And then you go like halfway up Halfway down Like tiny little pulses So you're doing like quick movements mm. But it should be <laughs> slow and controlled It shouldn't be that fast oh, Okay <laughs> <laughs> It's fucked It's good it it's the works. hardest part about it. You've got to try it. Do a um, class on YouTube after this. Yeah, do it on YouTube. But the funny <laughs> thing is, it's like the brain. <laughs> you're not, you def- you definitely not going to do it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> no, but the breathing is interesting in Pilates because it's like when you breathe in, like naturally, if you like take a breath, like you feel your spine slightly goes back, like you slightly arch. Mm. And then as you come out, it slightly rounds. That's why they do that thing so, in there um, when they're in like the dog position and they do the breath yeah out in yeah. yoga remember that in yoga so some people think you're meant to breathe out on the hard part but it's 
when you're like performing a movement that's facilitating like extension, then you like breathe with the way your body, your spine naturally moves, and then it exhales you around. What about um? Are you into saunas or like recovery? No, kind of I stuff? haven't. I. <laughs> Because I'm like a stressed out person. If I sit in like a hot room, I get so flustered. But it's the opposite though. <laughs> I've tried hot yoga. Oh, yeah. And like for me, like like that's hard in itself because mm. like I'm not very flexible. Mm. <laughs> and But it's more for my mind, like actually staying in there for like 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, but actually during COVID, I, I looked into buying a sauna. <laughs> Yeah, same. So I was like, I think this would be really good to have at home. How much money are you making? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's why I didn't eventually. Yeah. Um, I like my neighbors thought I was so weird because we have like a share house. Well, it's like a townhouse, so we've got like a block of three, so we share the backyard. Uh-huh. And so I saw the price, and I was like, oh, if I get the neighbors on board, like we cut yeah. it in three. And no, 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 where did you look on Gumtree? No, there's a few different brands. It's like Sunlight, I think is like the most legitimate one but also most expensive how much um, were they, they were, oh like for one person they were like four or five thousand on gum i saw like two or three i was trying to convince mom to get me one for my birthday you know i just feel like <laughs> you don't want to get a dodgy one if you're getting something like that like yeah, you want it to true. be legit the good thing about i go to the could you diggers gym now okay and um sauna there it's they, there's no rules it is so <laughs> fucking hot but that's different to infrared right yeah like a yeah. steam room at the gym no, what's the other one called? Infrared and something one. else. Traditional, yeah. Infrared's the one where it's no, there's no stones or anything. It just, just cooks radiation, for, right? Yeah, for forty minutes. Yeah, it meant, I think it's like meant to like penetrate deeper into yeah. its cells or something, but and that's why it has more of the immune like benefits because it's able to like uh, target your cells. But yeah, I know what you mean the hot when it's hot and all all things go. Those are the, those are the best. There's always conspiracy theories going on yeah. the because they talk about. How bad the infrared sauna is for you. Then they talk. The other person talks about how bad the steam room is. <laughs> and there's there's just the weirdest conversations going on. I reckon there. anything but that's the goes thing. Like if sauna. you do it and you feel good after it, then keep doing Some, it. The feeling after a sauna is unmatched. I reckon mm. it is the best thing. Yeah, you feel so good once you've like sweated it all out. There's no th- negative thoughts because you're just trying to survive. I reckon. Yeah. What are you doing there? Do you breathe? Do you put in head like yeah. no, you just no, sit there? No. It's good when you got someone to talk to. Cause yeah, because yeah, you stay in there longer. Distracting. But if not, like yesterday, I was trying to talk to this chick, and um, she just didn't want to talk. So I was just <laughs> like, I've up. seen people do that. They just don't want to talk. <laughs> Some guys bring their headphones in, which is fucked because they. Weird. Yeah. That's how you. Destroy well, there's them. ones on Bondi Road, at, um, Nimbus and Co. Mm, probably and charge like forty bucks for a session. Yeah, probably yeah. more. And they have saunas, but they have like an inbuilt TV with like Netflix and stuff, so people can watch it. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's some soy boy stuff. <laughs> so I feel like defeats the purpose completely. What about um, like cold water therapy? Yeah, yeah I well, I try and like get in the ocean as much as I can. I think I've been trying to get into like cold showers a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess same sort of concept as trying to stay into a hot room. It's so opposite. hard to do, hey? I, I, prefer, I prefer doing that than really? sitting in a sauna. No, I, mean, I find it easier yeah. to tolerate. Right. I always try and just get cold water on at least a couple of times while I have a shower. But yeah. It's just Oh, you're doing that's these some, ones. That's some serious discipline. <laughs> yeah. Some serious discipline. <laughs> it is, yeah. The water has been freezing lately, though. It's 14. Last week I swam and I was, like, numbingly cold. Yeah, it's good, though. Yeah, it was not, but it was good. It's so exhilarating. Like, you get out and you're yeah. like... Phew. <laughs> People don't swim in winter because they're like, oh, it's too cold. But they don't realize September's the coldest when the is when the water's the coldest. Yeah, I forgot because I went up to Byron for a week and I was like, oh, this is so nice. Mm. And I came back to jump in the water. Could live in so Byron, cold. you think? I don't know. I hadn't been there since schoolies. I hadn't been there in five years. <laughs> and then I went, and because of everything now, it's the only place people can go. So mm. I was like, I think I had this idea in my head. I mean, that it was a lot more mellow, which it is. But there were so many people there. Like well, I bumped into so many people from Sydney. <laughs> yeah, were you close to town? Um, I was for the first bit and then I stayed a bit more outside of town, which is a bit nicer. Let's go to um, the next. There's an there's a issue I want to talk about, uh, body image issues in young women. It's a big, like a silent epidemic kind of thing, yeah. would you say? Not many people talk about it, but it's no, such and a I think big issue. that's like the problem. Like I love social media in the fact that like it's such an easy way to share stuff and like connect with people, but it's just like so detrimental. Like I... Like, I I don't know, when did we first start getting Instagram? Like, how old? I got it after school, so I was later than Yeah, I got it, like, 15, 16. 15, 16. <laughs> and now there's, what? like, kids on Instagram who are, like, 10. Yeah. And, like, kids are making TikToks who are, like, 10. And, like, I was probably playing on, like, a Nintendo, maybe, at 10 years old. On the flip phone. 
don't um, know how, how does that going to end up for them? It's just, I think it's the whole, like, you know, that quote, like, comparison is the thief of joy. Julia. And I think it's, like, even if girls see something and people are like, you know, like, everything people put on Instagram is, like, the highlights of their life. Mm. Like, you can tell someone that so many times. But, like, they people look at their phones how many times a day? Like, 200, yeah. 300. And so if you're li- – it's that repetition, like, all mm. they see – and it's, it's just ridiculous. Like, I think – and I don't even know how people are meant to fix it because it's such a – it's just embedded in society now where that's – like, girls are just exposed to, like, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And, like, even on, like, my Instagram, I get so many messages from girls, like, how do I deal with, like, <laughs> all these things? Like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm trying not to, like, exercise three times a day and I'm trying to eat more and, like, yeah. I don't know how to deal with putting on weight or, like, I don't know. And I'm, like – That's over- <laughs> overwhelming. <I'm>, like <laughs> – <laughs> like I think also like half the people like wouldn't even want to say anything about it. Mm. And I mean like you have sisters, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you have yeah, sisters? You have sis- yeah. And I think um I don't know, it's like it's every female seems like, like it affects every them. Every female. And like sure some men as even well. now, yeah, like even now, like you'd think you'd grow out of it. Like even still my friends are like completely like all like mm. that will like be at the beach or like and they'll turn around to someone and They'll be like, oh, that girl's – like, look at her body. Like, oh, my God, yeah. she looks so good. Like, oh, my God, I look so fat. Like, oh, my God, why do I look like? – It's fucked. Oh, my God, shut up. It's just that like, mon- it's just monkey like, mind oh going back to meditation. And like, yeah. That's what – Yeah, and, like, also, like, I think girls need to realise that, like, your weight is not, like, an accurate reflection of your health. Mm. So, like, if you're super skinny, like, that doesn't mean you're healthy. No. And I think, like, half the people on social media have, like, severe eating disorders. And yeah. then, but yeah. they don't post that, so no one knows that. And people look at it and they're like, "Oh my god, I want to be like her because she's so healthy." And it's like, "No, she's severely ill." Social media sets the standard, hey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's an unrealistic or unhealthy standard. And then if people are just aiming to be like that, then they just like drive themselves insane. Like it's mm. just, and people feed off each other. So if if you, like if you're part of like a group, group of friends yeah. and you're getting that head noise, and then you come straight onto your phone. At, like when you're by yourself and you're getting the same thing. Game over. Like it's just, yeah. I think it's for guys as well, but to a lesser extent. I read this quote the other day, that the day you step foot in a gym is the day you're forever small. Yeah. Which is <laughs> yeah, like, because okay. you yeah. always think you're not big enough yeah. when you walk when you go to yeah. the gym. Yeah. It's to a lesser extent, but that's what, I reckon that's the comparison with guys. It's also just that thing about like, like owning whatever you want to do. Like mm. sometimes I'll be like to people, I'll like bump into people randomly and we'll just be chatting They'll be like, where are you teaching? I'm like, oh, I'm teaching here. I'm like, oh, you should come to a class. And they're like, oh, my God, no, like, I'll be so bad. Like, mm. I'm like, no one's looking at you, no offence, but, like, <laughs> people are only worried about themselves. And I was like, yeah. even if you are, like, have to stop or whatever, like, it doesn't matter. I think people are so embarrassed or they feel like they need to, like, be at a certain standard. And, like, yeah, I think you can't compare yourself. Like, everyone, mm. like, benefits differently from different things, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Sounds yes. like it's like a that's the female rhetoric going on. Like, there's that kind of negative way that you like m- most girls look at their body, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, so negative. Yeah. Like, I've never heard one of my friends <laughs> be like, "Wow, I look really good." It's like for <laughs> guys. <laughs> what? Why like, you say that? It's like for guys around here, a lot of it is like, "Oh, I got completely fucked up <laughs> in the." Uh, and I'm I'm a part of the guys here, right? so but like I'm just saying I'm not trying to separate, but. Um, it's like, oh, I got so fucked up on the weekend. It's like a competition. Chunted all weekend and then, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, and then you're miserable for like four days and it's just, and then it's the repeat. same kind of yeah. mental problems going on, I think. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, alcohol is a depressant as well. So, like, if you wake up feeling shit and people are like, what do I feel like? Except tequila. Stimulant. I was yeah. drinking some margaritas <laughs> and bone. They're so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about vitamin D. Mm. What does that do for you? Well, it does a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, we probably don't even get informed about it as much in Australia because – Because it's just so sunny. We get – it's like we don't even have to think about it yeah. because you step outside and then you get like every, – people in like England and stuff get seasonal affective disorder. Mm. So that's like your lack of vitamin D um, because it's so important for your mood. You're told um, not to go outside around here. It's like, don't go near the sun, you're going to get cancer. So yeah. I literally had a lecture on this last week and she was saying how frustrating it was because she said now because we've like shifted to this huge sun safety thing, people are now scared of the sun. Mm. 
where she was like, you know, if you go out in the middle of the day for like 20 minutes, it's because people like roasted in, in the sun for hours. But if you get like that 20 minutes in the middle of the day when it's like sunny, it's so it's so beneficial. And like vitamin D is a precursor for like calcium Everything. and like mm. all those important things. Like it does so much for you. And you can – even if you you like you can feel it yourself if you're sitting inside all day, yeah, and you don't get outside, in or like in winter if it's like storming all week, and you're like, why do I feel? It so always cute. comes back to the sun for me. Yeah, Rhonda Patrick said did that said that study. Ninety um, percent of the people in the um, intensive care for COVID in America had vitamin D deficiency. Mm. So it was a massive one. So the experts yeah, are telling us to stay weird. inside, but then they're not getting vitamin D and they're vitamin D deficient. Doesn't make sense. It should be outside. And that's the funny thing about COVID too. There's been like no comments on diet no. or like exercise. Get away from the beach, get away from it's the park. It's just like wear a mask, sit you, inside. If you say anything that's not a part of the, what the government's kind of preaching, you're crazy or a, yeah. yeah, you know, you're a conspiracy theorist, you know. Mm. Anyway, well, good chat. I think good we'll chat. wrap it up there. Perfect. What Perfect. episode was that? 17? Episode 17. Yeah, through Second girl. Killing it. <laughs> Killed 17. it. Yeah, we're getting there. You guys need more girls on here. Yeah, we'll Two recommend. Two girls out of 17 episodes. I'll have a you got the network there. Have a brainstorm. <laughs> you got the scoop it up network. What other topics do you guys want to look at? We can talk about anything. I, I reckon. Think. We'll, we'll see you later. See you next week. Yep. Trying to do them every Friday. Ciao, everybody. See you later. Thanks for having me.